Dave, the agenda filled up and you can get on here. There's 31 or two highway permits. He's needing to sign. I think there's a letter in there to explain the things. He talked to Leslie about it. I don't think it's actually in the same right of way, but it's real close. We need a motion to go ahead and approve these. We're probably better look at our first, I guess. Karen, this is a letter from Dave Fleming. It says, to whom it may concern, Cheyenne County will be approving the following highway permits with the exceptions of specific roads as we feel the pipeline needs to be deeper due to soil erosion problems in that area. When installing the pipe on these roads, we are requesting that public works employees be on the site to approve the installation. <clears throat> and there's how many of them? 35, I think. 35. Yeah, 31 or 2, maybe. Well, over 30 highway permits. Uh, it's 1804 to 1835. Okay. Is the numbers. Okay, do we have a motion to go ahead and approve these highway permits as stated? With the so moved. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Make sure you don't sign them once if they're not. Change. Yeah, but I don't know which ones they are. Well, he was supposed to be right oh, here. We go right here. He's got them marked. I was going to say, just second line up to
Yes. Okay. It passed. Um, next, Capers offers life insurance to employees. They also offer it to spouses up to a hundred thousand dollars, uh, children up to twenty thousand um, dollars. Would you? I guess would you be willing to offer that? Right now, we just do the employees. And I was looking to see if we could do that for spouse and child also. It's just a deduction out of their check, the same way we're doing it. It is voluntarily would they want to participate. Right. right. <clears throat> sure. It was just, we're just going to give them an option of adding <laughs> their, their spouse or <clears throat> their children to the life insurance offered by Capers. It isn't one of them things everybody has to take it or nobody gets it. No. Nope. Yeah, well, this is an option. Yeah, we're just giving them the option to, to buy it if they want to. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Do we need a motion on that? I would. Yeah. All right, so I'll move. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. The church is about the only building up there at the museum. Well, the museum roof was damaged too, which rescues you are going to fix that. Need permission to advertise uh, to replace the vinyl siding on the church. Put it up for bid. Yeah, for bid to advertise for bids. On the old church? Yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and start the bid process to get that repaired. Make a motion. To... Okay, we've got a motion in a second to go ahead and open up bids for the roof, <coughs> to repair the roof at the Old Country Church at the museum site. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Then our contract is up with CIC, which is ours. Need permission to go ahead and pay us $33,180. Again, it's our computer system. The CIC keeps track of salaries and budgets and everything else. There are registered deeds. Yeah, they're provided for services. For all, all the offices? Is that what? Mm -hmm. The time clock's on there. And It's, a, it's the annual fee. 
It's just a renewal of what we already have. Okay. So I'll move. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then I have the PVC disbursement request number nine. $468,281.50 and then the tax credit request number four for $12,466.61 and You've read these Eddie and they're all? Yes. if they ever put a fence up that many times in one construction. <laughs> how many, time, how many so. times that thing blew over? It's been a while. It's, they've removed that west side right now because they're uh, going to do that uh, parking lot this week and so they've got that drainage. Yeah. Brock said, I'm not tearing that out <laughs> until you're going to pull for it. <laughs> he said, there's a lot of rainwater drains through. <laughs> so hopefully this week the concrete will be finished. Okay, your motion to go ahead and approve the tax credit refunds. Tax credit funds request for $12,466.61 through the Greater Northwest Kansas Community Foundation. And this disbursement request from, uh, or it's request number nine for $468,281.50. So All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
and then this tree service uh, did the work up at the Good Samaritan campus. We went ahead and paid, I think there should have been a check in there for the 5200 that was quoted. This extra work that he did, there's... He said, she said, of $900. I don't know what you want to do with it. I don't know the whole story. The, when they trimmed the trees, he got up there, and some of them were done. And from what he has said, what he told me, is that Sue asked him to grind these two other stumps out. And she assumed that that would be part of the the fifty two hundred dollars. Another tree, he had a bolt and brace. I don't know what that is. Um, I believe Sue thought that this was included since he didn't do the other work. He his intention was this was extra work. But obviously, he didn't make that clear. Yeah. I, When he called, he just he was just okay. I just want to I want to get my original money. So I would like the other, but just he was wanting paid. Well, wait a it's nine hundred dollars. Is what's in question? If he didn't have to do all the work that we contracted him for, I wish I knew how much yeah. that was. But the work's been done. The work's been done, yes. I don't know if the work's been done. Huh? So it boils down to just a misunderstanding. It's a misunderstanding, and like I said, we paid the fifty-two hundred. But it's up to you guys whether you want to pay. So we've already paid him the fifty-two hundred. Yes, and well, that was the original. You know, she was in here what a month ago and said no, she did not authorize that. Yeah. So I say wait, let him take a small claims. I wouldn't pay. Well, that's the reason I'm looking at that end of the table. Well, the question I have is that if there were additional services that were going to be provided, this was over the $500 threshold and would have had to have been approved. $15. Is it 15 Yeah. I always have 500 on the brain. Well, that's what it used to be for years and years. <laughs> well, the problem is she said she was kind of in charge of that thing. She said she never approved. Scott said, he said, she said. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can. Well, yeah, let's table His intention, her intention. I mean, right. let's table it for now and, and uh, maybe ask Sue a few more questions. As to I what think there need to be more questions asked in regards to the whole project. Right. And what was expected, what was actually done. Yeah. Intentions. Exactly. Yeah, let's table that for the moment. So two that need to be signed and missed. Um, just give you a, we are doing advanced voting in the office, uh, getting a lot of nice compliments on the new equipment. It's in there. We really like it.
little business. Leslie's going to look at that. So we can jump to Tori. Okay. Okay, Troy. Right. First off, I just have these two applications that need final approval. Okay. That's, that's the easy side of things, anyway. Those are the two we've collected, both from the Bird City area and, uh, at our meeting. This month, we, as a board, approved all of it, and so we just need your guys' final approval. And then we can get them on board. That Seth, I guess yeah. Off Duhar, I believe is how he pronounces that. Yep. From what I've been told, I haven't personally spoke to him yet, so I don't know. I haven't met him, but the ones that are from over there know him. They they thought he'd be pretty good help. This is since got a volunteer. It's kind of hard to say no to him. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know if we've looked at? That's what I figured. <laughs> have okay, you guys you doing that? Go ahead. Um, have you got the meetings yet, or the minutes from this meeting yet? Yes. Okay. I hadn't talked to him in the last few days. I didn't know if he'd got them to you or not. Got them right here. Okay. So, and if you'd read them yet or not, we did vote in Grant Hovel as our new treasurer. So we've got that all pretty close to figured out and pretty close there. Um, Brian Hobrock is our vice president currently, and he has announced that he will be resigning after this fair week is over with. So there's going to be another shift of personnel come in after this fair. So just kind of a heads up is what's going on there. All right. Just for your information, we did go ahead and approve the terms. Transfer of eight thousand dollars to the fair board. Okay. Uh, Doors, Doors have cut the check to you guys. Okay. And deposit it in your account. Okay. Yeah, that would help. Thank you very much. And uh, Dolores is gone this week, and she's the only one that can do that. Okay. Apparently. So we'll so collect I it next week. I went over there to ask that it be transferred. Hopefully, we could get it to you today. But I was just told that she's not here. Okay. So don't go spend it yet. <laughs> I think we'll be okay here. It's usually after everything's said and done, we get to the end of the calendar year is when things really start to get kind of tight for us. So I think we'll be okay. But monetarily, right now, yeah. you're, you're we know we've shape. got that coming. So yep, yep. Like I said, usually once we get through Fair Week, we're set up good. It's usually just towards the end of the year, just before our allotment comes to us, that things get really, really tight. But well, and just so we're clear, th this. This is not going to be in every year, so uh, right. you know, okay. don't, don't expect it or look for it. Right. Uh, I noticed you're going to look at this brand for flies. Uh, years ago, this has been years ago, the vet clinic used to come down and spray. They had a spray. They would spray on the walls of the barns. Okay. And it worked excellent. Okay. And it would last for a while. Mm hmm. Uh, you might check with them and see what they. If Tom Keller used to come down and do it, okay, and it really did help. 
Probably been a lot by now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Dom has some in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, so basically, are, are we ready to go with the fair? We're really close. Um, there was a few things I was hoping Sheriff would be here today to ask him a few little questions here, but um, that intersection out there in the middle, it's all the world and streets all meet together. It's a five-way, and currently there's three stop signs there, and we all felt like it'd be a good idea if we could get a temporary stop sign put up on that fourth leg that comes in, like past Dustin Andrews' shop just a temporary stop sign to put at that intersection for the week to help control traffic coming out of there because well, every year that seems to be I don't think there's a yield sign there no. I don't think there's anything but you'll need to make that request through Dave Fleming okay I wasn't really sure I was hoping I talked to the city police chief because I know that intersection's kind of split right, half county half city yep and he he suggested I talk to Cody and see what his thoughts were because again, there's legal stuff to it that it may not be just a simple put it well, up. It may be a process we need to go through. And probably so, the, the most verse person, the, the, the really the one you're going to have to deal with anyway is Dave. Okay, but he also suggested that if we can't get it, that just to talk to Cody and maybe they could post a deputy there on that night to direct traffic. And so I was hoping to be able to talk to him today. But yeah, I don't want the board members approached me and I told them I don't have a problem other than putting a temporary stop sign. An idiot like me would. I drove through. You're just not used to it being there, and yeah. 50 years, and all of yep. a sudden, the stop sign shows up for three days. Yeah. Yep. I, I, well, I'd be curious. I, I, I don't know how that there. would work. Either we put one up and leave it. Yeah. Or like I, I told her, I said, I think maybe if the deputy would sit there and direct traffic for just throughout a the busy couple times, hours, yep. When when the night shows are out or mm -hmm. I don't know it's yeah that's really and it's it's usually just every night towards the end of the night when the carnival closes and everybody's leaving that's it gets to be really congested in that intersection lights coming from every direction oh yeah yep yeah it's too bad Cody's not here because I'd like to ask him if we've, ever, if we've had any accidents there or if, mm -hmm. what kind of problems it's really posed but yep it is, really bad. Mm -hmm. it is yep. a bad intersection. Yep. That's just one complaint we've had in prior years. Just it's well, so congested leaving. And you know, that's all going to be replaced. Uh, we, we approved a, an agreement with the city to split the cost of the, redoing, redoing that whole the intersection. Yeah. And then it would be the time to get a hold of the KDOT engineer and find mm -hmm. out if and when and how and can we... Mm -hmm. sign this thing differently yeah but you know these are all great questions I, I to me that posting a deputy there for a couple hours seems to be the proper thing to do but that's Cody's yeah, yeah. Cody's call if he's got that kind of manpower mm -hmm. so any idea whether he's going to be in today or haven't heard why don't you coordinate that with Cody okay. and I think my first stop would be down here to Dave's office. Okay. And just tell him what you, basically what you told us. That it's a short-term problem that when the fair lets out. Yeah, it's really just that issue for a few nights a year. Yeah. So it's not like it's something we really need a permanent mm -hmm. stop sign there, we don't <clears> think. so. But what I'm saying, if we could look into the future, maybe get that thing signed mm -hmm. properly. Yeah. When they redo that intersection. Well, the... One coming from the cemetery and the dirt road and going out on their ground for all that. Yeah. yeah. Because that will be young split straight down the middle of North Street. Yeah. Okay, yep. back to the applications. Did we look into the backgrounds of these? Uh, these guys? Neither one of those backgrounds. Okay. All right, do we hear a motion to go ahead and approve both these uh, fair board applications? One's a Caleb. Ernzen. Ernzen. Yep. And Seth. Off to har. Off to har. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Spell them right. <laughs> Spell them correct. Everything like that may be done both is not the correct. So how many more do we need? Well, I'm trying to think now with 
we're going to lose another one, like I said, after this brought us, I think this brought us up to 12, and then we're going to lose one again, so we're back down to four, I think, after. Thank you. Well, during the fair would be a perfect time to target individuals. Yep, we, we'll be able to talk to a lot of people that yeah. way. And I know that stirs up a lot of things. That's when I got involved was when I seen they were needing a lot of help, and that's what made me want to volunteer. So. That's what I'm saying. It's a perfect time yep. to target those yep. you'd like to see on the board. For sure. So, yep. I got one final question, which I know is kind of the difficult one, but where we talked about it before, the alcohol thing. We all kind of want to know and understand exactly what you expect out of us as a board and kind of what our plan is for keeping it out of there. Okay, here's the deal. We set the rules. Sheriff's Department's in charge of enforcing it. Okay. So, again, you're going to have to coordinate with Cody. Okay. He, that was the, he, he's the enforcement part of this. Okay. That was the main question I had was, is right. this up to us for what we're going to do, or is this Cody's call, how he wants to handle it? I think there's been a lot of miscommunication well, there. All we're saying is, due to past decisions made by prior commissioners that we're not going to change, you know, I'll call it fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. The enforcement of that side is, is, again, falls to Cody. Okay. And I don't think it's proper for us to interfere with the sheriff's ability to enforce or not to enforce. That's okay. his department's call and the prosecutor. My feeling is it's not your responsibility to enforce it. Okay. Do you think that? I mean, well, you got to help a little. But right. I mean, but it's not. <laughs> right. Not, yeah, but we're not going to deputize you and right. put you out there and say, hey, you got to right. do this. Mm -hmm. That's not the deal. Okay. That's just one thing we, we just really want to make clear. the information out there. We want to get it out that this is this is where what the rules are, and this is what could happen to you if you violate those rules. Mm -hmm. And again, the enforcement part of it is up to, to Cody and the prosecutor's office. Okay, great. If that makes sense. It does. I just want to make that. sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then yeah. on the same topic, the sign we talked about. Are we? This is really a question for you. Are we required by law to have it posted that there is no alcohol allowed? Or are we safe to operate without a sign because we haven't had not time to have one made? Is the main question. There, there. is one already down there, correct? On not that I'm aware of. I'm be one not one sure right where right. it is. If it's still it has to be right, one right at that corner. Yeah, and that's it's been a while since I've noticed it be there. So, well, that was one of the complaints we had last year. Yeah, we had a group of out of town people that came in and just assumed they could mm -hmm. consume alcohol on the property. Yep. And then they were upset when they got called on it. Yeah, because I, think I know no exactly signage. what you're talking about because well, I argued with the same one multiple times all night. <laughs> so, well, listen, it, it's the same as a speed limit sign. You can't yeah. put them up everywhere. Yep. Yeah. But I, I really would like to see some kind of notification there. Yeah. To just hand paint. Yeah. Sign? Can we That's just make shift you one can for make the week? A temporary sign. Yeah. yeah. In okay. regards to no alcohol on premises. Yeah. Okay. Allowed on premises, um, that can be posted, and then more permanent signs. Can be made later. Here's a thought. Use legal size sheet, no alcohol, no alcohol allowed on county fairground property. And you put those on the building doors and then just make it one sign at the entrance, a bigger sign that says no alcohol allowed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes but sense. it would appear from the article in the paper that the fair board was quite upset that they have to pay for these signs. <laughs> yeah, there was a few members pretty upset about that one. What well, wasn't coming out of their pocket? That seems like a silly argument. <laughs> but anyway, you can pay for the signs at your eight thousand dollars. Yep, and at that time, the argument they weren't aware we were getting that, so that kind of. Kind of put that fire out there, so there's really not much of an issue yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's a dumb argument. Yep. <laughs> Anything so, else, Troy? I think that's really it. That's I mean, really all I had. I think that's the last kind of okay. things we needed sorted out. Other than that, I think we're ready to, anything, ready to get this thing done. Anything you need, use your resources. Use Cody. Okay. Use Dave. Use us if you need to. If you got questions, call. We'll. Okay. We'll, we'll make this thing work. Also on that outside food vendors, 
Our insurance doesn't cover that, but uh, KCAM said that they would look at your policy. Okay. And I've asked you for that. They never have received it because they didn't know maybe um, what you... From what we come up with this year, I don't think we're going to have any outside vendors, so it ended up not being an issue. I don't but think in we're, the future, then. yeah. In the future, if we get back to it, then sure. But I think this year we're just going to have the 4 H booths open, is all is going to happen down there. So, all right. I think we're set under there. I think we're set. Okay, well, so have a great fair. We'll do it. Thank you guys. Thank you. Eddie? Morning, ma'am. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I'm here to uh, request our full six mail. <laughs> and I don't know. Somebody said I've got to do that every year. Sure, I do not. But anyway, I don't want to miss out. No, that's already set up. I mean, that, that's so going to continue to happen whether you come in or not. Good. Good. There's been different ideas on that. Uh, next thing, I would like to have you request from Good Samaritan. They've got $30,000 in a memorial fund. I would like to have you request that from them to be used on the remodel of the tub room and maybe one additional room over there. I think that would be a good spot for memorial money because that's something that all residents use now and in the future. And so it's my understanding that you just need to request that. And we can. Um, Leslie, your thoughts on that? I would like to have a visit with Karen Moberly. That's where you need to start. Please do. And ask some questions. Because I know there's been a lot of questions about that particular account. Mm -hmm. How much money actually stays in Cheyenne County, how much of it leaves, mm -hmm. how much of it comes back. I know there's been a lot of discussion about that money, so we'll have Leslie contact Karen and Very good. see what that... Then I would ask for 10 minutes executive session to discuss non-elected personnel. Okay. I'll so move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. How long? 10. For 10 minutes for non-elected personnel. 